Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Managing VFX Workflows and Editorial, a new series that I'm doing about best practices for managing and working with VFX shots and a VFX team as an editor. Hopefully you'll find some of the practices that I've developed over time to be useful to use in your own projects. As usual, this isn't the only way to do things, it's just the way that I like to do things. And it could be particularly useful to you if you're working on a short film, an indie feature, or on a project where you otherwise have kind of a small editorial team and you need to manage a lot of this stuff on your own, maybe without an assistant or with just one assistant. In my case, I'm currently working on a short film. It's quite VFX heavy, even though it's only 17 minutes long. And so we're getting the VFX started before we lock picture. The status of the film is that we're currently at rough cut two, so we're not locked. It's still a work in progress. There's still pickup shots to be done. So there's still a lot of things that could change. But our VFX team wants to get started on working on a lot of these shots. So it's now my job to start tracking and managing that in my offline edit project. So let's open it up and have a look. Here we've got my basic project in Avid Media Composer, which is my editor of choice. Now I'm going to be showing you how to do this stuff in Avid, but keep in mind that a lot of these same principles and practices could probably be applied to any other nonlinear editor that you're using because it's more about organization and workflow than it really is about actual technical aspects in a lot of cases. So this is my sequence. Unfortunately, because it's a work in progress, I'm not able to actually show you the image. So I have added a blur effect to blur it out. But mainly what I want you to be able to see is actually the overlays that I'm putting on the frame so that you have an idea of how I'm managing the back and forth of information to the VFX team. So my first step whenever I'm working on a project, and this is from the assembly stage forward, is that anytime there's a VFX shot, I write down what it is. And I usually just use the title tool to do a very simple overlay on screen that says what the VFX is. So there's a scene where there's a blue screen in the background and there's going to be a jellyfish tank. If we open up the title tool, we can see that I've just got this basic text. I actually create a preset for it and I can show you how to do that. So I'll just delete this one. So for example, I'm going to write VFX. This is the default font, blue screen, jellyfish tank. And then I can pick in my styles what I want my style to be. And I have this VFX note that I've already created as a preset in my style. And there it is, and it's a particular size and color, etc. And I can just place it wherever I want it to go. If you want to create a style, then you can just start typing. And then you can pick your font. So I like Arial, bold, pick your size, pick your color. I like to set a kind of different color code. So when I have a note that's a VFX note, it's blue. When I have a note for color or online, it might be orange if it's an ADR note. I use yellow. So you can just figure out what your own preferences are. You just pick like a blue. Oh, that's a little dark. Let's pick a lighter blue than that. Okay, so I picked a green. It doesn't matter. You can pick what you want. And then what you want to do is under styles, the drop down menu, you click save as, and it will ask you what aspects of this format you want to save. And I just leave everything checked off. And by default, it'll say like, oh, do you want to call this the name of your font? And I'm like, no, that's useless. I'm going to call it VFX note. Two. And I'm going to click done. And now VFX note two will pop up as a format in the drop down menu. So that's how you create your own little text formats, which are really handy. I'm just going to put this back to say jellyfish tank. And then we close that up. So labeling your VFX shots is going to be really, really important from the moment that you're working with your director, your producers, you want everyone to have an idea of what the VFX are going to be. And I always make it a habit to put these in my editor's assembly. So there's no confusion about what the VFX are, and which shots are going to be VFX shots. Obviously, as you continue on with the projects, you tend to add more, you change them, you change the descriptions. There's lots of different changes that can happen through editorial, but this is our basic first step. Here's another one that I have is a muzzle flash. So that's the first step in this process. The next step that we're going to move on to in the next video is going to be about creating VFX numbers or IDs, best practices for creating VFX numbers, and then how to put them into your timeline and have them display in your project. 